June 2nd, 2020 to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Kurkowski. Here. Lorik. Here. Dukniak. Here. Tillman. Here. Gale. Here. Kuzikowski. Here. Everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Catherine, would you start us off? Certainly. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Uh, Catherine, would you like to read the video conferencing into record, please? Certainly. This meeting will be held by video conference. Persons wishing to participate in scheduled public hearings need to register online prior to the start of the meeting. The webinar will start at 6.50 p.m., so those that registered may log in. This meeting will also be live streamed on the City of Oak Creek YouTube page via uh, Oak Creek live stream for those who wish to view the meeting. Persons requiring, requiring other reasonable accommodations may contact the city at 414-766-7000. Thank you. Um, gets us to approval of the minutes of 51920 if everybody's had a chance to look at those. If there's any omissions, errors, corrections, if not, we'll entertain a motion. Kowski, make a motion to approve the minutes of May 19, 2020. Nick, second. Roll call. Alderman Lork? Aye. Duke Nack? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. And item four is the COVID 19 update, and we have Darcy uh, virtually live with us. So, Darcy, would you like to give us an update? I would. Good evening. I'm Darcy Du Bois, Health Officer with the City of Oak Creek. Um, as of today, we had 165 positive cases of COVID here in Oak Creek. We've had 1,583 residents test negative, 12 deaths uh, among city residents, and um, of those 165 positive cases, 107 of individuals have been recovered and released from isolation. Um, over the past couple of weeks, uh, we have seen an increase in the number of Oak Creek residents being tested. Um, we're seeing much larger numbers of negative tests come through, uh, and we're also seeing an increase in positive cases, which uh, was to be too expected. Uh, it's likely a combination of increased testing that's happening and as well as the increased um, contact that individuals are having in the community. Uh, I did earlier uh, share the Oak Creek dashboard with the Common Council members. So um, IT has created a, a very useful dashboard displaying uh, COVID-19 data for Oak Creek residents. That will be posted on the website tomorrow um, as well as shared on social media and will be updated Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays um, along with the other data that we have been sharing on those days. Um, over with all of our cases, 44% of them have been connected to an outbreak, um, either in a workplace or a long-term care facility. Um, that is a decrease about a month ago. We were seeing about 60% of our cases connected to an outbreak. Um, so at this point, we are seeing more cases that it's harder to identify the source of the infection. And, and again, with more people interacting in the community, uh, we are likely just seeing more, more disease spread in those locations. 26% of our cases um, are specifically connected to an outbreak in a long-term care facility. Uh, previously, about 40% of our cases were. So again, we're seeing a decrease as we see more cases come in, fewer of them are connected to long-term care facilities. Um, the health department has been partnering with the health departments in Cudahy, South Milwaukee, and St. Francis to organize and stand up a testing site, which will be held this Thursday through Saturday at the Cudahy Water Utility. The National Guard will be on site. They'll actually be performing the tests. Uh, health department, fire department, and uh, possibly police department staff will be on site supporting operations of the testing. They'll be testing any individuals ages five and above and have the capacity um, to test up to 500 individuals a day, possibly more if we're seeing a higher turnout than that. We've been sharing that testing information on our, our website and social media and with our community partners as well. And we really wanted to work to um, make testing, have an accessible testing site among the South Shore residents. We have not seen a lot of testing available in our area. So we're hoping that if there are residents who have been struggling to get tested, that will be a good option for them. 
Just a little a brief update on funding. Uh, we have learned from the state that they will be passing on some of the CARES funding that's coming from the federal government to local health departments. So they will be allocating uh, funding for three specific purposes. One will be for planning, uh, and they are asking us to update our, our emergency preparedness plans with COVID specific information so that we will be ready to stand up a mass clinic if a vaccine becomes available. Um, additionally, they're allocating some funding for testing um, and that could be used to coordinate testing, to increase access to re resources, um, a variety of different ways to ensure that individuals here at Oak Creek have access to testing uh, if they need it. And the additional and largest pot of money will be for um, to hire additional contact tracing staff. So as I've talked about before, we have been working with, uh, we have been very fortunate to work with the library and the school nurses to help beef up our staff since COVID started. Um, as school ends and as the library works towards reopening, we'll be losing some of those resources. Uh, so we are working on developing a plan to bring on additional staff using that grant funding that's become available. The health department is continuing to work with local businesses as they continue the reopening processes. Um, I know many of them have reopened and we are hearing some really good plans and precautions put in place to uh, limit the spread of COVID in their workplaces. Uh, we continue to share guidance and recommendations on the website and by email as they become available. We've also been working with the Chamber of Commerce to disseminate information and um, We'll be partnering with them or participating in a, web, a webinar that they are sponsoring this Friday along with, um, I will be on there along with Doug just to share some updates and information and make sure that businesses know about resources that might be available to them. We also continue to work with businesses as they have individuals, whether that's employees or clients or residents who test positive to uh, do some contact tracing and discuss next steps and work with them on implementing measures to prevent additional cases. Any questions? Questions for Darcy, Steve? Darcy uh, Alderman Krakowski. I'm assuming we're still in phase C with that plan that we, um, how close might we be to going into D? And you may or may not know the answer to this. What about the, the splash pad opening up? Uh, right, so as far as moving into phase D, we wanted to see all of the indicators that we're monitoring in the yellow or green. Right now, four of the five are in the yellow. Uh, they, they are assessed every Monday and Thursday. So uh, the one that's in red is, is testing. We're still not seeing um, the number of tests or the uh, positivity percentage overall um, in, in the yellow or green range. So we are hoping to see that move to yellow soon. Uh, and the splash pad, I do not have the answer to that right now. We are um, a small group of city staff are meeting to discuss that along with some other recommendations around uh, summer events and programming soon. Is it, it, it's just, it's a fair statement to say that we're having more tests. So things may, may go up because of the, the, the availability of the tests. And then like you said, the, the fact that people are are socially interacting uh, a little bit more. Um, so let's hope for the best. Uh, but that you think that, that that's what we're probably gonna be facing, right? Is, is pockets of, of increases based on what you, what you said earlier, you think, right? Right, Ex exactly. I think that we'll continue to see, you know, as we see larger groups of people gathering and that there's a larger possibility for disease spread. Um, we are always looking at the percentage of positive cases. So as we see more people tested, we do see more positive people, but we're also seeing a lot more negative test results than we did in the past. Um, so we're not just looking at the number of positive cases, we're looking at what percentage of people being tested are, are testing positive. Thank you. Sure. Mike. Hi, Darcy Alderman, Mike Toman. Uh, are we aware of any uh, cases within our city itself as far as our city employees go? Um, that's information that I believe the HR person would have. So the health department manages cases just among Oak Creek residents. So the human resources department, if there were employees that were testing positive, they would be the ones that would uh, manage that. And that's protected health information. So we can't share that at this time. The reason I asked the question is if one of the city staff would be infected, um, 
how do you how do you mitigate that with the public given that our buildings will have soft openings now and we will have contact with the public right that was that's a, yep that's a good question and i can talk through that process uh, so if we did have a staff member just like any other workplace that tested positive uh, the health department wherever that staff person lives would contact the city the hr department and they would work through a process of determining who might have come into close contact with that employee while they were considered infectious. So we would look at employees, if they were an employee that interacted with the public, we would look at any interactions they might have with the public. And then there's an algorithm that we use or a flow that we use to figure out who's a close contact mm -hmm. and if any of those individuals need to be quarantined. And there would be a notification process as well of any individuals who had come into contact. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, Darcy, just a quick question on testing that's coming up in Cudahy. Uh If you could, the recommendation for those most likely to go and get tested, who should really look at doing that in the Oak Creek area? What's the highest demographic to be tested? Um, certainly we want anybody who's experiencing any symptoms to be tested. Uh, individuals who are asymptomatic are also welcome to be tested. Uh, as we've worked further into the um, outbreak situation, we are seeing higher numbers of cases among um, all age groups, actually. We're seeing more cases in the younger age group. Initially, it was it was concentrated in the higher age groups. So really, anybody who has an interest, who has symptoms, and who has ability to um, attend the testing is welcome to come. Okay, thank you. Here, I think I have one, just one follow-up to what you asked. Uh, Darcy, um, could you maybe explain what happens if somebody is asymptomatic and just decides, hey, I'm just going to go get tested and just put my mind at ease, and uh, then they come back positive, but they've had no, no symptoms, no nothing. What, what's the procedure uh, for that person? What happens? Sure. So the same process as happens uh, with anyone who tests positive, whether they have symptoms or not. So even if an indi individual is asymptomatic, we know they can still spread disease. So the, the health department would still contact them, would still go through the full contact tracing process, uh, notifying individuals they might have come into contact with. And we would also um, ask them to isolate until, uh, if they're asymptomatic, the isolation period is for 10 days after the testing date. Thank you. Sure. More questions? Anybody out of the audience? No? Okay, thank you, Darcy. Appreciate the update. You're welcome. And again, stay safe. Thanks. Um, item five is recognition for Chet. Uh, Chester Chet Gorbsmith is turning 100. Uh, very special individual in the area, so if you would, Catherine. Certainly. Congratulations to Chester Chet Grabschmidt on his 100th birthday. Whereas on June 8th, 1920, Chester Grabschmidt was born on the family farm in the town of Lake to John and Anna Grabschmidt, and where Chet was one of five children, which included two brothers, Gilbert and John, and two sisters, Lucille and Dolores. And whereas when Chet was six years old, because of his father's asthma, the family gave up farming and moved to South Milwaukee. And whereas during these times, Chet would help his father supplement the family's income by working part-time before and after school and even during his lunch break. And whereas Chet remembers these times being hard with the family on county aid and supplemental foods, but lo like most hard times, the experience taught him to be humble and close to his family. And whereas Chet started his academic life at St. Mary's grade school before advancing to South Milwaukee High School, where he graduated from in 1938. And whereas in 1943, Chet left on a ship, Cape Perpetua, heading for New Guinea, where he served in the United States Navy through 1945. And whereas being one degree off the equator, Chet describes his experience in the New Guinea climate as tough with very little food available to them due to environmental conditions. And whereas upon it, returning from the war in 1946, Chet began, began dating Leon Repick, a girl who he had met before joining the Navy and in, corresponded with throughout his time in the service. And whereas in 1947, Chet and Leon married and had two children, Richard and Karen, and were together until her death in 1982. And whereas after Leon's passing, 
Chet spent 10 years on his own before Lorraine Schweitzer, a longtime friend, asked him to dinner. Sometime later, Chet and Lorraine married, and he was blessed with four stepchildren, Sharon, Anne, Pat, John, and Jim, added to his family. And whereas Chet has also been blessed with three grandchildren, Tamara, Brian, and Gregory, and three great-grandchildren, Josie, Harper, and Benny. And whereas Chet worked at Busiris Erie as a template maker for 28 years and was the well-loved and respected mayor of South Milwaukee for 28 years. And whereas over time Chet has acquired a talent for growing dahlias and has a garden at Meadowmere Oak Creek Senior Living Community dedicated to them every year, which he generously shares with the residents and staff. And whereas in addition to tending to his beautiful dahlias, Chet is the moderator of the monthly Chet Chat at Meadowmere, where local dignitaries, but be, 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 be. <laughs> organizations or anyone of interest to the residents gather for roundtable discussions. And whereas Chester Chet Krabschmidt will be 100 years young on Monday, I'm so sorry, June 8th, 2020, a celebration in honor of Chester will be held at his residence, Meadowmere Oak Creek Senior Living Community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor of the city of Oak Creek hereby congratulates Chester Chet Grabschman on his milestone 100th birthday. Be it further resolved that the city clerk be and she is hereby directed to transmit a suitable copy of this proclamation to Chester Grabschman dated this eighth day of June 2020. Thank you, Catherine. Does anybody have anything to say about Chet? Has anybody had the pleasure of meeting him? Um, I actually was invited to a Chet chat a couple, Chris, uh, a couple of winters back during the cold spell in January. Um, got there about noon. Chet rounded up the residents of Metal Mirror. Um, so basically, it's his version of Meet the Mayor, and he draws better than me at 100 years old. <laughs> um, the residents were active. Chet still pays attention to what goes on in local government, not only in Oak Creek, but in his hometown of South Milwaukee. Um, I spent better than two and a half hours there. Uh, the residents wanted to know about the development, uh, how the community center is doing. They just had a range of questions about Oak Creek. Um, he is affectionately known as the mayor of Meadowmere, too, by the way. Um, he, he is he's quite a character. Um, for 100 years old, to be that sharp and aware and and still, you know, lead the activities there at Meadowmere is quite amazing. Um, he is a, a lifelong South Milwaukeean, without a doubt, uh, but it's great Oak Creek can kind of claim him and, and kind of share in this 100-year-old uh, celebration. So at an appropriate time, the clerk and myself usually go out and visit. So um, once Darcy gives us the OK and we move into the proper phasing, we will be going to visit all these centurions as we go out there. So we're going to wish Chet a very happy birthday and many more and uh, thank him because his family has also been synonymous uh, in the area on uh, state politics and and just many things throughout the county. So. Uh, they have given back to the community greatly um, with their experience, time, and talents. So happy birthday, Chet. So um, we do not need a motion on that, correct? That's just a proclamation. So um, moving on, our first public hearing is consideration of a conditional use permit by Sam Dickman for Central Land Company uh, for a freight terminal trans shipping depot at 10 at, at 10650 South Parkview Parkway. Catherine, would you read that in? Friendly public hearing number one is to consider a request submitted by Sam Dickman, Central Land Company 3, third LLC for a conditional use permit for freight yard, freight terminal, transshipment depot facilities within the proposed multi-tenant industrial building on the property at 10650 South Oakview Parkway. At Applicant is Sam Dickman, Central Land Company, the third LLC. Property owner, Central Land Company, the third LLC. Legal description there follows. Date of notice is May 6, 2020. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Doug Seymour. I am the Director of Community Development for the city. And this is a public hearing and a request uh, for a conditional use permit for a freight yard or freight terminal transshipment depot at 10650 South Oakview Parkway in the Oakview Business Park. Uh, freight yards, uh, terminals, et cetera, are conditional uses in the M1 Manufacturing Zoning District, which is the base zoning 
for the industrial park. And on this parcel, which is highlighted in red, uh, a speculative building was uh, planned and proposed and actually approved by the Plan Commission in April of this year for a multi-tenant building that could accommodate approximately five tenants. And although no specific tenants have been made, uh, named for the building, uh, the applicants have applied for this conditional use permit to allow the, the flexibility to uh, address the needs of future tenants uh, for these types of facilities. And it's not so much as when you think of freight yard, freight terminal, you think of maybe FedEx or, or UPS or something like that. But there are many logistics users that have very similar operations, albeit at a much smaller scale. And in buildings such, these, such as these, many of them do have a, a truck and logistics component to them. So it really is, it hasn't changed the building at all. The building which was approved is not a cross dock or anything like that. It's a, it's a typical speculative industrial building and it allows for, and I can actually show you the, the, the building and the next plan. You can see that it allows for up to five different users. And on the south end, it allows those truck docks for those users. So it's, it's doesn't it's it's not entirely uh, truck docks. It is uh, there are office components, warehouse components to that, uh, and only uh, seven spots for trailers. So it's it's not a a freight yard in the traditional sense where you're going to see hundreds of trucks there. It's it's just to support the operations of those businesses that may be leasing that space. Uh, the plan commission has reviewed not only the building plans for this, but they reviewed this proposed conditional use permit and conditions and restrictions and they have recommended approval to the council of those documents. This being a public hearing, I would request that anyone who is registered or anyone who may be viewing this evening's meeting to uh, please, when called upon, give your name and address and proceed to address your comments or questions to the Common Council. Uh, the mayor will call three times uh, for comments. This hearing is now open. Thank you, Doug. Uh, this will be our first call. Kevin, do we have anybody? We have Sam with the Dickman Company, Dominic with Broiling Design, and Michael with Broiling Design. Okay, if they'd, if they'd like to speak, uh, please let them uh, have, a, have the mic. All right, and then if any of your gentlemen wish to speak, you can unmute your microphone. Uh, this is Sam Dickman, Jr., uh, 2224 East Kensington Boulevard in Shorewood. Uh, we're available if there's any questions uh, that come up this evening. Thank you, Sam. Uh, this will be the second call. Kevin. Third and final call. This is Sam Dickman, Sr. Just in case Junior and Dominic can't handle this thing, I'll be available. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sam. How are you? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, um, that third and final call. All right, we'll close uh, the public hearing and we will go to consideration of the ordinance issuing that conditional use permit for the freight terminal yard in the Oakview Parkway. Uh, questions from commission or council? I'm sorry, wrong night. Nothing from Ken? Nope. Mike, anything? Nope. Chris? No, it was pretty straightforward at uh, planning commission. Okay. Seeing none, motion. He'll move to approve ordinance 2975, approving a conditional use permit for freight yard, freight terminal, transshipment, depot facilities, and the multi tenant building at the property at 10650 South Oakview Parkway. Kuzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. And item eight under new business is consideration of a resolution approving an updated intergovernmental agreement for fire and other protection services for the 2020 Democratic National Convention, which is planned to be held in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, do we have uh, Mike with us? Kresik? Mike? Yes, yes, Mayor, on the line. Dave Kresik, go ahead. Hey, good evening, everyone. Mike Kresick, uh, Fire Chief, Oak Creek Fire Department. Uh, before you tonight is the approval of the resolution uh, approving the intergovernmental agreement for fire and protection services for the 2020 Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has certainly affected a lot of aspects of life, and it is 
push back the dates, uh, the projected dates of the DNC to approximately August 17th through the 20th, 2020. Uh, this intergovernmental agreement was updated to reflect those change in dates uh, to reflect extensions of timelines and further discussion on the approval of the security grant, uh, which clarifies some of the reimbursement processes. I'd be happy to answer any questions related to this. Uh, the bulk of the agreement is the same as the previously approved agreements, again, with the changes to uh, dates, extensions of timelines, and references to uh, Questions for Chief Krasik? Anna, any? Nope, we're good. How about you, Greg? Nothing from Steve, Rich, anything? Okay, um, motion on eight then. Bill move to approve resolution 12163-060220, approving the updated intergovernmental agreement for fire and other protection services for the 2020 Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mr. Kosky, second. Roll call. Alderman Tillman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. And item nine is consideration of a resolution updating the intergovernmental agreements for the police and other protective service for the 2020 Democratic National Convention held in Milwaukee. Um, Chief Anderson, is he with us or did they have to take off? Chief Anderson right now is on the oh. phone. Oh, sorry, Anderson. Captain Bolander. That's all right. He's uh, he's right now. He's with the Southside EOC for the protests. So he asked me to sit in. Sure. Um, you want to give an explanation? Some, it's probably similar to um, fire, but go right ahead. It's very similar. It's uh, for consideration of the approval of the resolution for the updated IGA. Uh, same as Chief Kresick talked about for police and other uh, protective services for the 2020 Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee. Again, as Chief Kresick mentioned, um, dates have been changed. It's pretty much the same agreement that uh, was agreed upon earlier, but because of the dates and the changes, they had to have a new agreement. Thank you. Any questions for Captain Bolander? Nope. Seeing none, motion. Bill, move to approve resolution 12162-060220, approving the updated intergovernmental agreement for police and other protection services for the 2020 Democratic National Convention <coughs> in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Kuzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dupniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. And item 10 is also uh, consideration for police. It is consideration of a motion to accept a bid for a P3 power for the purchase and installment of a Mitsubishi Diamond Plus 1100 amp series UPS system in the amount of $34,149.10. Captain Bolander? Uh, yes, this, uh, this item, the UPS, is so we can have continual uh, electrical support for our dispatching center when we switch over to um, our backup generator or if our backup generator fails and the grid fails, this will give us some alternative. Our system currently, our UPS system is currently out of date as well as the batteries and they are at the end of life. Um, so this is just basically to ensure that we have uh, nonstop and continuous dispatch services. Questions for Captain Bollander for the UPS. Steve? Captain uh, Alderman Kurkowski, what happens to the old unit? Uh, is it uh, taken in uh, trade or are you guys going to try and sell it? Or is it worth, it worth um, selling? It's pretty much at the end of life. No one will service it. So we don't have many options for it. We're trying to use as much as we can in there that we can reuse, but the batteries are also at that place. So we're kind of on borrowed time with it now and nobody really wants a unit that no one can service. Thank you. Any other questions for Captain Bollander? Uh, Ken? Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Mike, you may or may not, do you know if this was in line with where we expected at the cost? So with the cost, they got an estimate earlier. So this is, uh, I believe it's $3,500 over that cost, but one of the, uh, the UPS actually came in cheaper on our second quote that we got, but this pays for all electrical hookups. It's pretty much a complete cost. 
but it, it does include the batteries, which are at the end of life. We couldn't use our old batteries. We thought we could squeeze more out of them and use them longer. And that just wasn't the case. So that $3,500 increase is because of the batteries need to be replaced as well. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Okay. No further questions? Motion. Great. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Mike? Yeah, hi Mike, uh, Alderman Mike Tillman. Do we, it, there's a cost share. I, did I miss that in here with uh, St. Francis or? I don't see that there is a cost share with St. Francis, right? There will be a portion of this that we will build back to St. Francis, yes. Is it a percentage, uh, Bridget, or? I would have to double check the exhibit in the agreement. I believe it's 25% because this is direct technology related to the dispatch sector. Um, so that's my recollection off the top of my head. Okay, thank you. My recollection is 25% as well from that agreement for this type of uh, equipment. It is 25%? That's what my recollection was as well. <laughs> okay, all right. We're either both right or we're both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any further questions? Seeing none, motion. We will move to accept the bid from P3 Power for the purchase and installment of a Mitsubishi Diamond Plus 1100A series UPS system in the amount of $34,149.10. Kuzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Lork. Aye. Dupniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Item 11 is our treasurer's information report. Um, with us is Barb. Evening, Barb. Good evening. Thank you. Just oh. There you go. All right. There we go. Sorry. All right, uh, as Mayor said, it's the Treasury Report on Investment in Banking for the City of Oak Creek Accounts, month ending April 30th, 2020. Our beginning balance was $50,154,611.27. Ending balance, $41,811,525.73. Our interest earned for the month was $45,997 and 26 cents. And our uh, decrease from beginning to end was $8,343,085.54. Some of the uh, larger activity, which would kind of explain the decrease. We did have tax collection of uh, a little over 1.1 million, um, but our February tax collection had to be paid out to the other taxing jurisdictions. Uh, during the month of April um, of just over 5 million. And we did have debt service payments of about $5.3 million go out as well. Questions for Barb? Oh, pretty standard business, a little <laughs> slower, but. Yep. Um, okay, we will move right on to 12 then, and that's consideration of a motion to enter into a three-year renewal with Tri-City Bank as the city's depository for banking services and authorize the city treasurer to sign a letter of agreement effective November 15th, 2020 through November 15th, 2023. Barb? Great, thank you, Mayor. Um, so three years ago, we went out for bid for banking services um, and uh, on October 3rd, 2017, the council uh, designated Tri-City National Bank uh, for the Depository for Banking Services and that uh, agreement included uh, an initial three-year period with the option to renew for two additional three-year extensions and our term expires uh, November 15th, 2020 um, and the bank has agreed to uh, a three-year extension or uh, opting that for that three-year extension with no increase in fees. Um, they've provided excellent service to us for many years, um, including tax collection services at their branches and through a lockbox. So I am asking for your approval to utilize the first three-year extension and sign the letter of agreement with Tri-City National Bank to be effective November 15, 2020 through November 15, 2023. Questions for Barb regarding Tri-City and the agreement? Okay, 
Again, a uh, good local partner. Uh, they've been with us a long time and they do provide us great services and have really helped at tax time in particular. I've heard that a lot from residents, so. We, we love it. <laughs> it's good. Uh, motion then on 13, uh, sorry, 12. Bill moves to approve the three-year renewal with Tri-City National Bank as the city's depository for banking services and authorize the city treasurer to sign the letter of agreement effective November 15, 2020 through November 15, 2023. Kuskowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. And item 13 is under community development and it's consideration of an ordinance amending an ordinance to correct a typographical errors regarding the original zoning district. Doug. Thank you. Uh, just as just really a cleanup uh, ordinance when back when the council adopted ordinance 2973, uh, it the ordinance incorrectly listed the, the existing zoning as I want to get this right uh, as RS4 single family residential. And in fact, the existing zoning was RS3. It does not change in any way, shape or form. The fact that the property was rezoned to A1 agricultural. It was just that the base zoning was listed incorrectly in the original uh, rezoning ordinance. And this ordinance 2976 corrects that. Uh, questions? On motion. Oh, you ready, Mike, or you got yeah, a question? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, Tomin will make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2976, amending ordinance number 2973 to correct typographical errors regarding the original zoning district. Oracle second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tomin. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Um, engineering item 14 consideration of award for the 2021 private property maintenance contract to Robbie's grading LLC for the bid proposal of $132 per ton. Um, engineering is Mike with us tonight. I am. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, so this is really a continuation of uh, a practice that we've had in place now for uh, 10 years um, where we uh, come under contract with a, uh, a contractor that is capable to uh, clean up some of our problem properties here in the city uh, under our uh, 15 uh, 300 ordinance and um, Robbie's grading uh, was the low bidder this year uh and actually robbie's grading has been the contractor for the last 10 years how these con how these contracts have been um structured are they are a two-year contract and then there's a mutual agreeable uh one-year extension three up to three times and then we do come to council to renew that when, when that happens but at any rate um that has been the arrangement for uh two cycles now two full cycles with the extensions of 10 years. Uh, Robbie's grading uh, came in at $132 per ton. Anderson Landscape and Maintenance uh, was at 200 per ton. Anderson uh, Landscape and Maintenance, I had talked to them uh, in the uh, bid process. They have a, a contract with the city of Milwaukee, so they are um, you know, uh, well capable uh, to perform this type of work. Um, however, there's quite a discrepancy in the, uh, or uh, disparity, I should say, in the, in the prices. So, um, you know, we would recommend that we uh, continue our relationship with Robbie's grading based on his lower bid. He is a local contractor and, um, you know, we just feel like that we, uh, that, that we've got a good contractor uh, to work with uh, as needed in his capacity. Okay. Questions for Mike regarding Writing service. Mike, uh, good evening, Alderman Dukniak, 3rd District. Uh, I know that we have discussions about uh, each of our districts and, and some problem properties. How often is Robbie's greeting used, Mike, per year? Well, and, and this is kind of the thing, you know, uh, over this, uh, this long relationship that we've had, I, I believe we used him one time under this contract. But, um, and that has to do with, you know, there, there are um, uh, citations issued, there's, there's, there's uh, court appearances, 
there are uh, extensions to deadlines. And sometimes these things have worked themselves out without us having to actually have him mobilize. Um, and yet we still have some, some problem properties that, that I think most are aware of um, that, uh, that we, we, we uh, this is a good relationship for us to have uh, in case we need to mobilize fairly quickly. Um, okay, thank you. But, but, thank but you. at any rate, yes, we, I think we used him once under this contract. And then I know we've used him a, on a couple of other projects where we actually had to get uh, quotes uh, for work that was more specialized, not really fitting under the, uh, the scope of this contract. We had him raise a, a, a home that was a problem home. Uh, and Mike Bolander knows very well what the, the property I'm talking about because we had a lot of communication on that one. Uh, there was another time where there was a, an excavation that needed to be filled. It was a foundation for a building that just did not move forward. Uh, so he's been very reliable. So, um, you know, the recommendation is that we, that we enter into this contract with him. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Any other questions? Seeing none, motion. Clark moves to award the 2020, 2021 private property maintenance contract to Robbie's grading LLC for the bid proposal of $132 per ton. Mr. Kels, Gail, second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. And item 15 is consideration of a resolution approving a stormwater management practices maintenance agreement with Vision Property Group for their, med their Vision Medical Center development at 10148 South 27th Street. Mike? Uh, so this is um, not uh, out of the norm of, of a lot of these um, stormwater maintenance uh, um, uh, agreements that, that you've seen um, engineering bring before you uh, over the course of the last couple of years uh, with all the development that we have. This is that property that is down on uh, South 27th Street, uh, I would say probably halfway between Oakwood Road and, and Corporate Preserve Drive across from the Ascension Hospital. Uh, it is a uh, doctor's group that is opening a medical building. It is a long, narrow property. Um, looks to be a really nice development. They have a, uh, uh, their, their stormwater management includes a, a detention pond at the far east end of their property, so at the rear of their property. And this, this agreement is, is what uh, solidifies their obligation to maintain that uh, 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 the stormwater facilities, primarily the detention pond. Um, uh, in, uh, in in an order such that it was de designed to function. And if they don't, uh, the city can step in and have that work done and, and uh, charge them the cost of that work. It's a way of assuring that this is maintained. Okay. Questions? Nothing? Okay. okay. Uh, motion. Mr. Kelsey makes motion to Common Council DAS resolution number 12161-060220, a resolution approving the stormwater management practices maintenance agreement with Vision Property Group LLC for their Vision Medical Center development located at 10148 South 27th Street. Oracle second. Roll call. Alderman Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. And item 16 and 17 is the license committee. I will turn that over to Alderman Kirkowski. Thank you, Mayor. I trust that everyone has had an opportunity to review the Common Council report for item number 16. Does anybody have any questions or concerns with that item? Seeing none, or hearing none, Krakowski make a motion to grant the 2020-21 renewal business alcohol license request as listed on the June 2nd, 2020 license committee report with issuance subject to final inspection approvals listed and payment of any fees or obligations. Dukniak second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lord? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Tolman? Aye. And the same would go for item number 17. Anybody have any 
cares or concerns or questions? Hearing none, or seeing none, Krakowski make a motion to grant the various license requests as listed on the June 2nd, 2020 license committee report. Kank second. Roll call. Alderman Gusikowski? Aye. Krakowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Yes. Aye. Dale? Aye. We get them all? Did they say aye? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a definite aye. <laughs> um, item 18 is our vendor summary report. If everybody take a look and uh, direct your questions appropriately to who's ever streaming in or in the room. Uh, Haldeman Dukniak, 3rd District. The only question I had was on number four, Biblioteca, uh, and I'm guessing that's something related to the library. Isn't that the Spanish word for library? Okay, I don't know that. Oh, yes. <laughs> See. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> but it just says for renewal of 2021. So it, it is one of our um, the online journal companies that we have to pay for an annual subscription for. Yes, for the library. And for the library. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, motion. They'll move to approve the May 27th, 2020 vendor summary report in the total amount of $343,655.56. Ms. Kowski, I'll second. Roll call. Artemin Krakowski. Aye. Laura? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. And item 19 is consideration of a resolution authorizing the city treasurer to waive the interest and penalty on real estate property tax payments with an installment due date of May 31st, 2020 that are received after their due date and paid by October 1st, 2020, if approved by Milwaukee County Executive. Barbara. Thank you. So I won't get into a lot of the history because I've been kind of keeping you up to date, um, sending updates as, as things occurred, as you saw it changed many, many times over the course going through legislation. So I'll just uh, kind of briefly go through where we're at right now, um, since that really is all that really needs to be considered. So um, a couple of things I want to note before I kind of go into it. <clears throat> um, in the recommendation, it includes at the end, if approved by Milwaukee County Executive, as of um, earlier yesterday when I had to get this in, um, he had not signed, but I received an email from the county uh, comptroller uh, very late in the day yesterday. Um, the county executive has signed, has approved it. So if you cho choose to uh, approve this, you could strike that end part off of, of, the, um, of the adoption for the resolution. And the another thing I wanted to mention was, uh, as of uh, early yesterday, the fiscal impact I had on here for estimated cash flow delay um, of $700,000 as of later today, it was actually down to under 350,000. So just want to point that out. So um, kind of the background on April 15, 2020, uh, Wisconsin legislation enacted um, the 2019 Wisconsin Act 185, which was all related to the COVID-19. And in uh, section 105.25, uh, there was a provision for waiving interest and penalties on uh, property tax installments after April 1st. And so, um, but part of that was the requirement that the county had to uh, determine that they had to approve it themselves through a resolution. And there were two options, one being a hardship case by case, um, which would require some criteria on, or it would be a general waiver. Um, the county did approve by resolution on May 28th. Uh, they adopted uh, the general waiver, so there would be no criteria or anything. Um, 
And uh, so that now it would require, um, should the city of Oak Creek wish to do this, we would need to pass a similar resolution. I just wanna point out, again, this is for property tax installment, uh, for real property tax after that's due after April 1st. So the only option that we would have now is our May 31st tax installment which was that amount that I gave you is outstanding at this point. Um, there would be nothing that would be retroactive. So we could not even go back further than that. Um, anything that is paid before the due date doesn't fall under this. So there would be no uh, refunds or voided payments or anything like that. It's only who is unable to pay by the due date for this third tax installment. And we do have to wait for um, five business days after the due date. So really this Friday would be the last date that we would receive payments that wouldn't, that wouldn't matter either way. Um, so anything after that, so beginning on Monday, any payments that we would receive would be normally considered late and would accrue interest and penalties. Um, so that's what you would be waiving. Um, they would have until October 1st 2020 to make their payment um, and still um, receive the waiver. If they wouldn't pay by October 1, uh, interest and penalty would then be calculated and it would go back to February 1st. So just like every other tax installment, you know, it's very consistent with our tax installments. Um, so uh, again, nothing retroactive. Um, specifically would be just for this tax installment, nothing after this, everything would be back to the way the code is, uh, as normal. Um, I think I covered it. Um, if, so if you would approve this, then we would have to work with the county trying to figure out how we're gonna uh, make this happen. Cause normally we would turn taxes over to them after July 31st. They've asked us to, to possibly consider collecting longer, which, you know, we've, we, we would be able to work out with them. I know um, I've had conversations with, with Bridget and, and finance department and um, we really don't see any issues with it. So questions any, any questions? Nothing from Ken. Nothing from Chris, Greg. Rich. Good thing. It's good. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a nice Excuse little you. one thing. Go ahead, Chris. I just want to thank Barb for keeping us up to date. Well, this has been so much in flux and fluid. Uh, you've been kind of keeping us up to date, email and whatnot. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Certainly shortened our discussion tonight by knowing a lot of stuff ahead of time. Yeah, and it's it, it's something uh, for what everybody's been through. It's it's a little bit. So um, motion then on 19. Clerk moves that the council adopt resolution number 12164-060220, a resolution authorizing the city treasurer to waive interest and penalty on late real estate, real property tax payments with an installment due date of May 31st, 2020, that are received after their due date and paid by October 1st, 2020. Yeah, second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kierkowski? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Uh, before we adjourn, just a couple announcements. Uh, the city buildings are in a slow, soft opening. Uh, you will be able to access the buildings. You'll see some slight modifications. Um, a little bit different than what you might be accustomed to, but it won't affect the service or professionalism in any way, shape, or form at any of our buildings. So. Uh, we're slowly moving that way as those numbers subside. Uh, a reminder, uh, the COVID is not gone, so please practice social distancing and be respectful of others and, and uh, when necessary, wear that mask to respect others. Um, and then our farmer's market is opening up this weekend. A little bit back to normality there. Uh, there'll be some slight changes. You'll, you'll see some hand washing stations and some um, different social distancing techniques being used there. Uh, but there's also a pre-order, you can go online to their Facebook page or our, 
I think it's the Farmer's Market Facebook page you can access. If not, you can check our website and you can pre-order your vegetables and have them and you can drive up and pick them up if you so choose. So again, uh, it's supposed to be a nice weekend. Please get out there, practice your social distancing, uh, but support our local farmers. So with that, uh, adjournment. Mikowski, make a motion to adjourn. Dupniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Dupniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Floric. Aye. Thank you.